All right, welcome back. Hopefully you're here at the main stage. Hopefully all your breakout sessions went well and you've been able to go to the exhibit hall. Don't forget the exhibit hall is open uh, for a few more hours. So please go over there, network, collaborate, meet all our industry leaders. Right now we're at the back, uh, main stage and I don't wanna chit chat anymore. I wanna bring to our stage, Limaris Torres of Block Damon and Antoine Tome of Splunk. And they're gonna talk about operating nodes and other infrastructure and Ethereum and Web3. So I cannot he wait to hear what they're gonna talk about. Antoine Lamadis, it's all you. You got 20 minutes to pack it all in. Thanks, James. Uh, I'm going to start with sharing a little bit of uh, what we do. And uh, Lamadis, you please, um, we'll talk a little bit about your offering with Blood Demon and then we'll, we'll talk more. So, okay, of course. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Limaris Torres. I'm a research and development engineer here at Block Damon. For those of you that haven't heard of us, we are one of the industry leading decentralization as a service providers. Currently, we have over 260 globally distributed team members. 60% of them engineers, over 35,000 nodes deployed live and being managed right now, 10 different cloud and data center providers that we partner with, 70 different points of presence, 50 protocols that we support, obviously, including Ethereum, one of my favorites, uh, 200 institutional customers, and over 10 billion assets under management staked. Uh, additionally, on our infrastructure slide, Next slide, please. There you go. Um, uh, these are different services that we offer here at Block Damon. Um, we have the node infrastructure as a service side that also comes with our Ubiquity um, data management platform. We have the staking infrastructure that we provide and we have yield generation, which is access to DeFi yields. So for more information on this, feel free to visit blockdamon.com. We have limited time today. Uh, so I'll let in, uh, Antoine introduce his slide. Thank you, Numeris. So uh, we work on blockchain at Splunk. Uh, we do really two things. Uh, one is we monitor uh, blockchain infrastructure, and this is what we're going to talk about mostly today. So we have the ability to look at you know different providers and um, kind of piggyback on their backend. We can uh, monitor metrics. We can monitor traces as well, which is a newer way of seeing what's happening between the components of the blockchain, and of course all your logs. So we have the ability to, to perform this. This is something that we're doing at scale. Uh, we have another solution called Splunk Connect for Ethereum, which I'm spotlighting today. It allows you to using the JSON RPC interface to collect all the blocks, all the transactions, all the information such as um, you know, balance of accounts, uh, ERC-20 activities, NFT metadata, and log all this information to Splunk so you can make sense of all the data that's happening on chain and you can better get better insights into uh, what's going on. Okay, that's it for the intros. Uh, Maris, I think we should talk a bit about what's going on here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so maybe we could backtrack a little bit and uh, let's talk a little bit of what's a node for you, for me, and and all that, right? The, of course, of course. I feel like the beginning is always a great place to start. So first of all, <laughs> welcome everybody. For those of you who are not so familiar with, you know, uh, node infrastructure and node management, but have heard about Ethereum, the node is essentially the base layer of a whole blockchain, right? Everything you do has to go through a node at some point because a node functions like a gatekeeper to access the underlying blockchain. On Ethereum, we have two different layers, ETH1, which is our execution layer, and ETH2, which is our consensus layer. One of them is a normal node where you can write transactions, you can get data, and you can verify a state. And ETH2 is the validator node for proof of stake, um, where we can do staking. Alongside our nodes, we also run some monitoring tools to ensure performance and reliability. And on the note of monitoring, I'm going to pass it over to Antoine at Splunk, who <laughs> that's their whole business line. Yeah, absolutely. And it really comes into two flavors. One of them is um, something like the Open Telemetry Collector, which is a new component open source under the Open Telemetry project. It allows you to connect to the Prometheus port, for example, get all the information, also collect all the logs using the, the file log components so we can really um, you know, journal all the logs, make sure we don't uh, ingest them twice, 
uh, batch them, uh, do a good uh, cycling through all of them. Um, and um, the eFlogger. So when I mentioned Spunk Connect for Ethereum earlier, we have this ability to deploy a tool that connects to the JSON RPC port. Uh, and over time, you know, keeps pulling for new blocks, get all information out, gets all that data over to Spunk into a nice JSON formatted blob that we can use for analytics. Um, so, yeah, what does that make sense? Yes, <laughs> yes, I think that definitely makes sense. And I think monitoring is something and, you know, making sense of the data and all the data happening on blockchain is something that everybody here is definitely interested about. I know it's something that I spend a lot of time researching for sure. Um, and with that, I want to know what is your like day to day look like at Splunk in terms of what value you're providing to your clients and how you accomplish that? Yeah, so the principal way by which we, we perform value right now is by providing ledger analytics to our customers. Um, we would be doing things like trying to understand over a period of uh, two, three weeks, maybe a month, um, all the data that comes into a contract. We want to see all the addresses interacting with that data. We want to see the graph of those addresses. We would like to see the volume, for example, for DeFi protocol. So all the things you would do when you, you know, do your own research on DeFi, you can do it in Splunk, but you can do it so much faster. We have all these data at our fingertips, and we can perform all sorts of interesting analytics there. Um, and we can enrich that data with off-chain data. So for example, all the NFT attributes, we can get them, we can compile them as well. Uh, we can combine that with logs, with real life events. We even uh, started ingesting Discord. So you can really understand what your community is doing, where your requests for help are coming from, and really make sense of, uh, of the situation as a whole. How about, how about you? What's your, what's your day today? I mean, do you sleep though? Like ever? No, I, I have good bags and eyes. <laughs> it's over. Of course, of course. I'm pretty sure nobody in a blockchain web three uh, sleeps. So uh, over at Blockdaemon, our day-to-day -day can vary depending on what department we're in. But since this is a talk about infrastructure, I'm gonna give a like explanation on what exactly our infrastructure or as we call them, like node ops. Uh, great team, by the way, does. So uh, as you know, Ethereum is not only mainnet, but it's a family of blockchains that are using the EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, um, including, you know, testnet, genosis, and a bunch more. So it's important for us at Blockdaemon to be able to maintain all of these protocols and make them feel the same and function the same at the same quality, even though they're different in some ways, right? And we take the pain out of running the nodes so that our customers can focus on building the apps. How do we do that? Uh, well, <laughs> it's very, very carefully. <laughs> um, so our node ops team, uh, they have something that's like a node queue. It's like the middleware that allows us to manage all 36,000 nodes that we have from a single pane of glass. Mm -hmm. Our days look like performing upgrades, reconfiguring nodes, launching validator nodes at scale, uh, we're, we're checking uptime, we're checking connectivity, and monitoring is very important so we can make sure that we are keeping sync with the blockchain. At the end of the day, tools are great, but tools are not strong enough unless you have good engineers like Antoine and my node ops team, and sometimes I like include myself in that, uh, with, you know, experts in over 50 different ecosystems here at blockchain. I'm not sure Splunk how many you're collaborating with, but I'm sure it's a lot as well. And um, essentially, we we're, we're, we all love what we do and we're obsessed with this. And so we're, we're working hard to make sure that we're providing the best <laughs> experience for our customers and making it seamless, just like normal internet. Wow. And, and you know what, this is exactly what uh, at Splunk we would require this time. So uh, to kind of answer your question, we support a handful, five, six different chains right now. You know, we have the big heaters, we have Ethereum, we have Bitcoin. But we're unable to face the demand that's coming from the overwhelming supply of all, all those chains coming up online as we, you know, I, like I was telling you, like we turn around, a new chain is up, right? So our team is, is small and we're dedicated to legend analytics and making our the life of our customers so much better to address better decisions, to know where they should push a contract, what's a good gas price right now, right? This type of decisions are hard and require a lot of analytics around the, 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 the notion that we're trying to apply. We could use a blog daemon hosting service to really just get all that data out of the way, get all the uh, hard work around ops and, and get all to, to the to the good part where we can provide legend analytics, you know, to the minute. Um, so 
That's... Of course. And Splunk is definitely building something that's missing right now in the industry and in the infrastructure monitoring side, which is that ability to monitor and ability to do that uh, mm -hmm. data analytics. Like Block Daemon, we have something called Ubiquity that we're building to standardize the structure of accessing the data. But accessing the data isn't like enough, you know, Splunk, I know I used it personally when I was a cybersecurity engineer for threat management. And there's so much more than just um, uptime and functionality that we can be doing with all of the data available mm -hmm. with, um, with with the blockchain space. So we're doing mm -hmm. what we can, because one of our goals is definitely abstracting the way that the infrastructure layer works so that it's more frictionless for the user and taking that data and making products that are functional for our clients and that it's again like i said earlier that goal is to just make it frictionless almost like the normal internet that you access from your phone and you don't have to think about and that there's not all these hurdles and all these different clunky tools um that we have to use like right now if you're um on the base layer tools of the EVM chains, like layer one and layer two, and you're moving assets from like a base layer to an L1 layer, it's it's clunky, it's hard, it requires a lot of work and the, the barrier of entry is ridiculous. So we wanna make sure that we um, help commoditize a blockchain. And like I said, that's why we're providing decentralization as a service and we love building with the community and partnering with people like Splunk. Yeah, uh, that makes a ton of sense. I'll. Um... I'll plug one thing for you to, I don't know if that resonates with you. Um, we've had, um, when we talk more throughout the enterprise use case, people who are interested in not just receiving message from their nodes and how the health of their own nodes is going. Also, like if you're in a consortium, right, to, I think there's a great uh, quote on that that says, uh, you know, distributed systems, you don't know, but your, your machine is broken because of someone else on the internet, right? Um, is that something that would be interesting to use to have a way to even like in a decentralized manner, collect stats and health metrics and, and monitor nodes that you don't even run yourself? Is that something that you folks are looking into? Oh, I cannot uh, give away all our secrets. I'm not entirely sure if we're looking at monitoring other people's stuff. I know that our uh, focus right now is providing our customers with the best <laughs> and the brightest and the most resilient nodes that they possibly can get. So mm -hmm. um, I can tell you though, that we do partner with a lot of foundations and we try to participate in development and innovation to make sure that we are actively building with and for the community. Um, and several chains uh, foundations are our partners. And the reason that we do this is because we wanna make sure that when institutions are coming into the space, that they have a trusted entity that can be like the chaperone to help them break into this industry with the institutional grade solutions that can support their individual needs across different chains. And we are seeing a lot of interest in um, Ethereum right now. So like I said, I'm focusing mostly on what my customers are asking for right now, <laughs> at least with my research. <laughs> Good business person, right? <laughs> um, I mean, that's, that's splendid. That's a great job. And I think this is a, a good way to go. Um, yeah, we, we are using an open source approach to our work to try to make it less about us and more about the community as well. And so we, we have open source most of the actual connectors and all that data. The, the thing that where we would um, kind of make sure that we're able to, to sustain our engagements and, and you know, put, uh, you know, keep our family fed is we, we want to offer a service where people can get access to that data. And so one thing we will want to do at some point is offer a way for people to easily access the Splunk data already decoded, already kind of uh, able to, to ingest and start having ability for folks to really easily make uh, interesting searches, maybe provide alerts for them so they can create all this without having to ingest, you know, for each and every one of them terabytes of data, right? As, uh, I don't know if it's getting worse for you. I, I feel like every, every day we're seeing the volume in terms of just raw bytes, right, out there increase tenfold and it's right. getting really right no it's it's definitely an interesting mission to be working on so what excites you the most about blockchain upcoming right now um wow that's a good one uh <laughs> you know to me it's um uh i'm gonna pull a plug for a friend of mine uh guillaume ballet he's working on vertical trees mm -hmm. uh on the gaff team and uh, I just love that tech. Um, I also love the guy, and I think he should get uh, a raise. So here's a <laughs> shout out to, to him. Uh, and um, I, I think this is um, probably um, 
uh, going to change everything about rollups, about um, availability of data, about how we restore and how we optimize the structure of our uh, blockchains. So this is the, the tech uh, optimization that, that you know, I, I look at it and I marvel uh, how cool it is. Right, so. right. No, there's a lot of really interesting projects right now. I mean, I, you know, what I'm excited about changes depending on what week it is and what day it is currently. I'm at ETH Amsterdam representing Block Damon at the Ethereum conference. You can see my two uh, badges. Nice. And so I'm really excited about what the Ethereum Foundation is working on, all of their new uh, initiatives that they're sponsoring, all of the cool projects that people here are working on and hacking. Um, but I'm also just excited to onboard more institutions. I feel like the ecosystem can only get better and like i said it's it's like i told you earlier antoine you know i'm all about community not necessarily competition and i feel like uh the more institutions we can help on board onto here the more space we can make for everybody then the more beneficiary it is for the whole community because if the community grows and the value of our tokens as well grows and the the quality of the products that we're producing grows and i mean it's a win-win for everybody yeah preach uh absolutely and this is this is where I, I hope we are able to also onboard a lot of traditional players who are used to Splunk, like you mentioned, you, you know, in the cybersecurity world, it's kind of a staple, and uh, to bring them over to blockchain, kind of break away from you know, kind of the anti-crypto sentiment away from that, and say, well, you know, this actually is valuable. You can actually make very valuable decisions based on what's happening here, and you should just take a look, you know, keep an open mind, and this is a, a good intro into without without having to go into crypto twitter for example <laughs> right 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 no and I, I i like that because i mean in my mind because i was a security person splunk was just you know security analytics and threat management and incident response and it was super helpful for that um but i like that you can do so much more with the data than just you know security investigations i like where this is going i like that um uh, I, I see a potential collaboration here we'll talk off the camera <laughs> off the recording <laughs> Um, and yeah, and like I said, there's a lot of value added here. So I see that someone has their hand raised. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function here or message either of us on LinkedIn. Um, ooh, or okay, you, some, some people have. Yeah, do you have access to the pathable messaging yes. chat? Okay, yeah, take a peek yes. there. A few pop there we go. So if you're hosting all these nodes, how decentralized from network distance perspective can they be? Okay, so um, the, we, we don't have a monopoly. <laughs> um, and while we do provide reliable service and we do have a lot of nodes that we're running, they are across 50 different protocols. This is not like we have 36,000 Ethereum um, nodes that we're running and we're not trying to centralize Ethereum by any means. We're trying to build a community and we're trying to give access to everybody. And at the end of the day, we might be running the hardware, but we are not running the mission, right? And the mission depends and varies broadly across our different clients and the different institutional needs. And, uh, you know, it's not just institutions, but um, we're at an institutional grade <laughs> talk. So I'm speaking about institutions. Um, so again, uh, running, running hardware, I don't think really centralizes anything when the mission is still to help people kind of like uh, Amazon Web Services or Google, right? They help build the internet, but they don't necessarily own every single website that runs on their information. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, my questions are still loading. Uh, recent AWS outage took down a surprising amount of notes. So not on all chains though, not all chains work on cloud. So that's a little fun fact for you. <laughs> um, what a new question do we I have? I can confirm that from our from our investigations, like there are a lot of different providers out there, a lot of bare metal don't, you know, I wouldn't, uh, so, Ken, I do not have enough time to answer your question about uh, staking and earning yield and how you would delegate uh, to, to the validators, but please feel free to reach out to me personally on LinkedIn and I can walk you through the whole process and I have a very beautiful uh, graph that our engineering team came up with on how exactly that works uh, to facilitate that for you. Oh, and, and my chat box is blank. There's one question from Carlos, which is, um, I know at least one FM client's moving away from open telemetry. How is this being considered for monitoring in Splunk? Well, so let's, and there's another feedback here. Uh, which if clients are all in, in open telemetry? 
hey, none of them are all in. This is an open source technology, which is completely unrelated to blockchain. It is just meant for you to apply telemetry to your infrastructure. It is not at all something you have to opt in. It is not something that is, uh, has to be bundled in. Um, I did provide some native support for open telemetry in Besu, just cause. Uh, and that gave me a lot of interesting feedback. By the way, open telemetry is just reaching 1.0 and it's a good time for you to get involved if you want it to get better before it gets really, really stable and crummy. So um, it's, you know, by all means, um, it is not something you have to use if you use an Ethereum client, you can do your own logging. Uh, there's such a thing as you can use less, you can use, uh, you know, all sorts of piping and, and methods. Um, but I have an inkling towards open telemetry because I contribute to it. So, you know, call me biased. <laughs> And with that thought, we have reached time. Um, I think we were yeah. only till 52. So where is our host? Take the wheel. You were 52. I was thinking it was 56. I was just listening and enthralled. And one thing, Limit, you said you're not in sales. You could definitely be in sales. So uh... No, don't tell my salespeople that. They'll take you up on it. <laughs> I really like the research side. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you're good there, but I do want to mention as far as the EEA and you mentioned about onboarding and kind of like that uh, you know, neutrality and that's really what the EEA is. We're a neutral third party place. We've been around since 2017 and that's our mission and our goal and our role is to help companies adopt and use Ethereum technology and let's get everybody on board. And, and so just the way you guys were, were talking, I love to see that synergy and to my knowledge, this is the first time you guys have connected so just for everybody's sake so um and, and Lamaris, you mentioned that as well just the like-mindedness of this community so uh it's just a, a great community so thank you guys for your uh, uh conversation i saw ken from he's with the eea so it looks like and sounds like we'll have you guys back for another session so we'd love to have you um now we are taking a break and we're going to concentrate on the exhibit hall so for the next 25 minutes please get out well bathroom break, coffee, a little snack, but get over to the, uh, the uh, exhibit hall. But Antoine Lamaris, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to have you. Block Damon, new EEA member, so excited to get you and your team involved. Splunk, longtime supporter. You guys have always been involved. So again, let's spread the word. Let's build the community together. Thank you very much and get over that exhibit hall. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>